good, amen. blessed, highly favored, deeply loved, amen. Ain't it a blessing to be alive, amen. amen. God is so good past our expectations, man. This is, amen. you know, it's that song that says, as I think back over my life and I think things over, you know, I don't even supposed to be here, man. Come on. <laughs> We only, some of y'all know you all supposed to have been deleted a long time ago, but you're still here. My God. And, you know, I was thinking about last week when preaching the message about what true success means, not just in your bank account. But when you truly humble yourself to God's will and God's plan and God's word, that humbleness and yielding to God and what he says about you in your life is true prosperity. Amen. And just humbling unto his goodness and humbling unto what he defines as love instead of what we think we define as love. You know, we think that fame sometimes in our natural mind or money and all these things equates love, but it don't. What really equates love is you knowing that God loves you undisputably. You don't have to ask a whole bunch of questions. You don't have to wonder. You just know that you are loved by God. Amen. On, amen. Even when Joseph was in the pit, yeah. even when he was sold as a slave, the Bible says he looked up and he knew that he had favor with God. And just because it's not revealed now to on, people man. don't mean it ain't revealed. Come on, man. We are so scared of growing stuff underground. Where people don't see. And we would do anything to let everybody know. Listen, it ain't for everybody. <laughs> it's an underground process of the seed that's working inside of you right now. I know I'm free. <laughs> and you know what? It may not be for everybody yet. But you know, and God knows what he's doing inside of you. And that's the only thing that matters. When other things start matter, that's when you start putting on more things on you that's supposed to be. Amen. Amen. I was listening to this Mike Tyson interview, and uh, I think it was Joe Rogan. He was like, man, you're the baddest man on the planet. You had all the ladies. You had all the money. You had all the success. And he said, you said that you wouldn't, you, um, you would give that away for something else. He said, yeah. He said, to have genuine love. For somebody just to love me for who I am, not for what I can perform. He said, and he just couldn't get it in his mind because the way we've been set up, he says, no, but you would trade that for, he said, yes. He said, you did a thousand squats a day. It made you into a beast, a monster. He said, I didn't want to be a beast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. And I keep listening to these interviews because I'm a studier of man. Even with Michael Jackson, he said the same thing. He said, I just want to have a normal life with some, and my father just to love me, not for a performance base. Mm -hmm. Because this is the thing you don't understand. They can't keep it up. Mm -hmm. You can't keep it up. Yeah. You can't be A plus one model every day. Come on. You can't be the best of you every day. Somewhere you're going to fail. Mm -hmm. And when you do, do you have somebody to love you? It's what matters. See, oh man, when are you preaching that? You know what I mean? You giving people a license to fall. No, you're going to fall. Right. It's not if you're going to fall. Gonna it's fall. when you fall, do you have something to lean upon? Yeah. That's not going to leave you just because you made a mistake. Yeah. How many people would, would, would this church would have kicked out if I seen them doing something beforehand? Mm. But then they matured into the man or God that has called them. We kicking people out too early. Instead of cultivating them, like the Bible says, we are called to the ministry of reconciliation, not perfection. And when you're called to perfection, that's anti-love, anti-Christ. This is about you being right coming to church. This is what really holiness means. No, that's not what holiness means. That's holiness means no matter what you do, you are separated from the world. Mm. Come on, bro. Come on. <laughs> so, you know, the Bible says this. Matthew 23, 12. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be what? 
So if you try to exalt yourself like a Michael, like a Whitney, like an Elvis, like a, I can go on and on and on. Then guess what will happen? You will be humbled. But guess what? If you allow God to exalt you and you humble yourself, he would exalt you without all that weight. That's what Mike Tyson said. He said, he said, when I was when I was doing all that, man, I had all that weight on me. I just, I, I you know, I, I went to drugs, I went to this, I went to that. And I was like, <laughs> and I was kind of laughing because not just how I talk, but the way he was portraying it is this. It's almost like, and Christians do this too. We bear fruit, right? We bear seed. And then we try to grow the seed ourselves. Hmm. Have you ever seen a tree going, I gotta, uh, I gotta get up. Ooh, I, this lily on the field. Ooh, I gotta, I'm just trying to, Lord, I'm running. Trying to be a honey. 99 and a half won't do. No, no effort will do. Mm. And that's what you have to understand. You can't grunt this out. You have to allow God to grow this out. That's the reason why the Bible says this. And Luke 12, 27 says, Consider how the wildflowers grow. They do not labor. Uh-oh. I thought we got a label for this, right? They do not labor, yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. Wendell, what are you saying? That means that there's a way that Solomon tried to do it. Solomon had all these concubines, all these wives, all these sword men, all of these, the most beautiful gardens in the world, the most richest man in the world. But guess what? He had a downfall. He was intermingling it by his own way. And that's why he failed. And God compares Solomon to the lily. Do you know why? Because the lily is homegrown by God. He says, Solomon is not more beautiful than this lily. The lily is not trying to be a lily. That's why I see Christians. I'm trying to be a Christian when I'm trying to be holy. I'm trying to be righteous. I'm trying to be. He don't want you to try to be. He just wants you to be in love with him. And when you're in love with him, you refute anything that comes against love. So I can't steal from my brother Jack. And why? Because I love God and I know he loved me. And because of that love, now I follow what the law says. I can't commit adultery. Why? Because I know that God loves me. He loves my wife. And I wouldn't want to hurt my wife. So the law is twisted in a way where I'm doing it more when I'm in the auspices of love. Not in the auspices of fear. Not in the auspices of if I do this, there's going to be brimstone thrown at my head. That's what we heard, right? You know, I learned something with the Mike Tyson document, with the Michael Jackson. That wasn't God money. That was bitter money. Mm. And that's the reason why they had to spend it out of control. That wasn't, that, wasn't, that wasn't God doing it. It was them engineering it, doing it themselves. And when you do it themselves, you're going to look a little perturbed. You're going to look a little bit constipated. No. <laughs> if you're trying, you're lying. If you're trying to do this Christian walk, you're not doing it the way God wants you to do. He wants you to have this homegrown in your heart, knowing that God loves you and nothing can separate you from the love of God. Amen? Amen. So, the first thing we have to do is lay down your what? Burden. Oh yeah, we gonna lay down my burden <laughs> down by the rivers. Listen, that means God gonna take all my trouble away. Nope. nope. <laughs> That's not what it said. <laughs> Laying down your burden does not mean God is going to take all your troubles away from you. It means he's going to change your mindset. It means that the burden of perfection is thrown off of you. 
This is what you, you, you know, that Birkin bag mentality, that, that, that mentality that I, I got to have this, I got to have this, or I ain't a man. I got to do this, or I'm not a woman. I got to do this, or I'm not a, you have to throw all that burden off you. Perfection burden, some of you all have. You ain't going to never be perfect. <laughs> Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you what? I'll give you what? Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle, humble in heart, and you will find rest for your what? For my yoke is what? Oh, I've heard so many minutes of This is a hard walk. One pastor told me, I don't even want to mention some people because the stuff that they're going to have to go through with Christ. I said, man, I wouldn't even want to be saved. <laughs> if I got to go through all that, jumping all these hoops. <laughs> and then I got it. I said, oh, you're in religiosity. Religiosity is man-made stuff. You the one that said no, no lipstick. I ain't read that in scripture. You the one that said that you, we can't wear. You the one that said that. I didn't read this. There's a lot of stuff I didn't read in this Bible that you didn't. Man ordained and not God ordained. That's that weight, man, that you got to get off of you. Weight of that. I have. You know what? I love being on time. And it's a burden sometimes with some of the things that goes on in life. I remember uh, I was stuck in traffic this week and had three counseling appointments. <laughs> and I was like, I was getting a little flustered, you know what I mean? I'm like, won't y'all just go? You know, yeah, I know y'all don't do that. Y'all perfectly behave. You're so eloquent, I know. In your cars, you're just so wonderful and you're singing praise all the day. No. <laughs> But I was a little perturbed. I was a little frustrated. I was a little upset because I had three appointments. I had a five o'clock. I had a six o'clock. I had a seven o'clock. And if I'm late for one, I'm late for all. Until the Holy Spirit said, stop going 85 miles per hour. <coughs> Slow down. And just give them a call. But I got I to gotta show them that I'm this. I got to show them that I'm this. He says, no, that's your burden. That's not my burden. Call them. So I called my 5 o'clock. I said, I'm stuck in this traffic. I don't know what's going on 270. These people crazy. Can y'all push it to 5.30? Oh, yeah, when do we understand? I called my 6 o'clock. Can y'all push it to 6.30? Oh, yeah, when do we understand? And then I called my 7 o'clock. Can y'all push it to 7? Oh, yeah. I said, all of that stress, all of that worry, all of that was on me. That wasn't on God. We put undue stress on our own head. I got to have this before I'm 30. I got to have this before I'm 40. I got to have this before. Who, who put that on you? Mm -hmm. You put that on yourself. Gosh. You can create your own God in your own mind, and you're the one that's frustrated. Mm. I'm coming. I've seen people do this at work many times. I'm coming to work, and if they don't speak to me today, and, you know, they come in the first. They, they come in first, so they supposed to be speak to me first. And if they don't, I'm going to be peeled all day. And then the person don't speak. And it happens. And this person, I said, you're creating your own hell. Because you're the one that set that up. Didn't nobody tell you to set a standard on somebody else that you can't control? We are the ones, if you say, I'm going to go to a buffet and I cannot stand chicken. If you put chicken out here, I am going to be upset all day. That's on you. You put that standard in your head. If you say, I'm going to have the worst four years, if my candidate don't get, con get nominated, then that's on you. God is still saying, I'm going to bless you either way, whoever gets in office. <laughs> we are the one that's controlling the leverage. Because the Bible says you're blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed coming in, blessed going out. Yeah. So when a person comes to me and say, man, don't leave that door, don't ever go to the city, I'm going to be blessed there too. I'm going to be blessed in the county. I'm going to be blessed anywhere I go. You're not going to put a limit on me of where I can or cannot be blessed. It don't have an age limit. It don't have a spell. It don't have a limit. It don't have a bar. The bar is in your head. No matter where you go, who you go, when you go, why you go, you're still blessed. Uh-oh, even in sin. 
Now this is the hard one. You know, Paul told a person this. When you go to bed with a Harley, don't you know you're taking Jesus with you? Why didn't it say when you go to bed with a Harley, Jesus just ran out the room? That's a controlled message. I have to fear you to Christ instead of loving you to Christ. And that's what's wrong with this generation. We don't know that we're already loved. As I'm standing in line this morning, <laughs> getting my cup, getting my water, <laughs> and this person, 10 minutes <laughs> with their lottery tickets, yeah. a whole book, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and getting their pack of cool 50 kings and they camels, and they did, and they did. Only thing I want to say, I, something about me just want to just tap the man and say, don't you understand that when you swam to your mother's womb out of all the million people, don't you know you already won the lottery? Don't you already know that you're it and Satan's trying to make you think that chasing something is it instead of you being it? Don't you have an understanding that all this nicotine is not going to make you relax, that you're going to be stressed right after it leaves you? Don't you know that none of these devices can ever lead you to true peace? True peace is when you take all the stipulations out of your mind, out of your heart, of what you think is love, and just receive God's love unconditionally. Amen. It's called agape. Learn about it. Breathe it in this morning. Magnify the God that loves you. And then you will be able to properly love people back. Because we put stipulations. God ain't putting stipulations on us. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I had a friend one time. He didn't want to be my friend because I missed one phone call. One phone call. I'm like, wow. Have you ever made a mistake before in your life? <laughs> you have to have an understanding that you put those rules on people because you're placing it on them yourself. That's why we don't have a, a great relationship with God because every time we go to the throne room, we're always looking at what we haven't done instead of what had Jesus already completed. Come on. Everybody say, it is finished. It is finished. <laughs> now, do you mean it? <sighs> Another thing that we do, everyone is not your assignment. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, every person, everything is not your what? Assignment. It's not your assignment. Amen. Find out what your assignment is. Find out what you are supposed to do and do it to the best of your ability. And after you do, lay all the rest of that to the Lord. Seek God first in everything that you do. I've seen so many people bump their head for decades doing things and it's not even in your assignment and they frustrated. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing it for? <sighs> I got I to gotta do it. And then you know what I see? They lay it down to God. They quit and they say, God, what do you want me to do? And then I see a miracle happen. It happens every time. <clears throat> and then I say this, you know what? You didn't have to go through all that. You could have laid it down first. Even when I'm counseling, sometimes you know, I may not know exactly what to say. I may pray under my, un, you know, I used to pray in the Holy Spirit under my tongue while the person is talking. I say, why am I doing this in the middle of a counseling session? How about before the person comes in, I pray in the Holy Spirit and seek what God has to say before they even walk in the door. Mm. I've never had a bad counseling session since. Mm. <laughs> I've never had a in my opinion, had a bad message since. When I pray before, I go through, that's the reason why we bump our heads with so many things in relationship. And me and Keisha said, you know what, we want to do this the right way. We, we prayed and fasted before we got together. <laughs> because you know what, we bumped our heads so many times. Let's see what God has to say. Some of us, when we pray, we need to sit down and shut up and listen to what you got to say. I've been saying, see, you can't talk and listen at the same time. Prayer is about listening to what he has to say and then effectively saying, you know what, God, 
Thank you for those instructions. I'm going to do it because I know if I don't, I'm going to go and I'm going to make my own personal hell. <laughs> you don't want to do that. God wants to create heaven on earth for you. Amen. Amen. But most importantly, Matthew 6, 33. But first and most importantly, seek, amen, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing things and being right. The attitude of the character of God and all those things will be given also. So seeking God first in everything that you do is a, a, a real a blessing to God's kingdom of success. And always humbling and being thanksgiving for everything that you do. This is one of the biggest ones, man. Humbleness equals thanksgiving. Show me a man who's not happy, I'll show you a man that's not humble. Show me a man that's not humble, I'll show you a man that's not happy. Because you know why? We overlook, oh, I just seen a guy on, um, it's one entertainer. He said, I will pay somebody $300,000 to give me their kidney. And I'm like, wow, $300,000. And I was just thinking about how all of our kidneys, our limbs, our heart, our, our valve muscles, when they're operating perfectly at times, and we just have a bad day. I'm like, why are you having a bad day? Don't you understand the opportunity that you have just to breathe? <laughs> just to suck on oxygen. Do you understand? I, you know, I remember working at Oats, and I used to pick up five paraplegic uh, people every day and drop them back off to their parents. And this used to really hit my heart in a different way. When I used to drop them back off, their parents would be outside waiting for them as I had the wheelchair. And, and they was like, oh, I'm so happy to see you, Johnny. And Johnny, you know, he'll have this disfigured look on his face and all these things, but the parent will be crying at times. Happy to see her, even though they wipe the child. They do all these things for the child. And I just look at that, and then I will go to a person that has a child, and they have a bad grade, and they just scolding the child. And I'm like, wow! It's about yielding yourself under the mindset of who you are. It's going to determine what type of day, what type of life you're going to have. You're missing all these blessings because they dropped a grade, and then you miss it, and this person's seeing all these blessings, even though this person can't even make a grade. I said, Lord, I forgive. I, I ask you for forgiveness for being in pride. I ask you for forgiveness of thinking I know it all. The more you grow in the Lord, I kind of start being quiet even more because the more I know, the more I know I don't know. <laughs> the more I know that God is always doing something behind the scenes that I don't even know, that I can't even fathom about. Amen? I look at this documentary about this man with no arms, no legs. He preached these dynamic messages. I'd be like, this dude ain't got no arms, no legs, preaching a message. Saying that he has the best life that he can ever ask for. <laughs> With no limbs. It still blows me away. Oh, yeah, man. You know, that's, that's that guy. You know, it's, it's supposed to happen. No. This only happens when the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Not the joy of your limbs. Yeah. Not the joy of your money. Not the joy of what you think is success. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So when I got let go, the joy of the Lord is my strength. When I lost a friend, the joy of the Lord is my strength. When I lost this, that, or another, the joy of the Lord is my strength. What is that joy? When that agape love that he will never leave me nor forsake me. Even on my dying day, he will embrace me. He will love me. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. No weapon formed against me will ever prosper. He won't stop people. Oh, man, I got a nail in my tie. What God's saying to you. God's still saying he loves you. Why are we allowing one little circumstance to define our whole life when the Bible has never changed his outlook about who you are? He's never changed his mind. We change our mind about ourselves. 
Because we don't look like the person that Ebony makes it. Because we don't look like the person that. No, you're not going to fool me. <laughs> I ain't falling for the banana in the tailpipe. I know who I am. And I'm going to enjoy the journey. I never go, man, one, one day, Anthony, when we was packing in the, in the, when we was in the hotel or, you know, one day when we get our own building, we're going to be somebody. No, mm -hmm. we weren't doing that. Nope. We was having Saturday night sessions with our 10 people, eating, having a good time. We weren't even thinking about moving. It's the journey that you need to appreciate. It's as you're going, as I picked up my brother Jacob today, and we had an awesome conversation riding the church. It's the journey of loving. Listen, you're going to spend 90% of your life on a journey, 10% of your life actually getting the very thing that you wanted. And after you get it, you move on to the next thing. So are you going to have 90% of your life in frustration, waiting, holding your breath until you get to the 10% of your life? I've seen so many people in prison. I can't wait till I get my degree. I can't wait till I get married. I can't wait till I did. But on that wait, start loving God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That wait is not a prison. <laughs> man, oh, man. God tripping. That, that wait <laughs> is not a prison. <laughs> that wait is a celebration room. Oh, that wait, <laughs> those that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew your strength. Yeah. You shall fly like eagles. But those that try to bring that lily out the ground before time, they're going to crash and burn. They're going to faint. The Bible says even the young people faint. And I see a lot of Christians faint because they're putting on more than they can handle. I remember God said, I got so much going on, God. I need your help. He said, I didn't make your schedule window. You made it. <laughs> <My God. laughs> you the one that created that deadline in your mind. You the one that created this. Not me. I was going to love you whether you made the deadline or not. I was going to love you if you got married or not. You the one that kept that love from yourself. Not me. Don't put that on God. He loved the prodigal son when he was out with the pigs. It's the prodigal son that didn't love himself. And the Bible says he came to himself. What is that? Come to himself. I woke up and recognized I'm the one that's stopping God from loving me, not God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Bible says this in Nehemiah 18. Go and enjoy the choices of food, the sweets, the drinks, and some of those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your what? Strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Never, you know, sometimes, and me and Jacob was talking about this as we was riding away. Sometimes prosperity can weaken your strength because now you think because you got it, I don't need God no more. Oh, what a grave mistake. <laughs> I've seen people get promotions and be like, all right, thank you, God. I've been praying for this all day long. Peace out. <laughs> oh, what are you doing? <laughs> then that same job, where they butt out <laughs> because what God gives to you you need his strength to sustain it. Amen. <laughs> what God gives to you is not from man. God gave Solomon all the prosperity of the land. Then Solomon said, okay, I'm going to do this now in my own strength. He said, what? He said, you can't handle this. The Bible, Solomon went crazy. You know why? Because it's not meant for you to handle it's meant for you to get down on your knees every day before your children, before your people, in front of your congregation and say, Lord, help me to be a better husband. Help me to be a better pastor. 
Help me to be a better entrepreneur. Help me. Show me your will, Lord. See, getting on your knees is humbleness. Mm -hmm. Getting on your knees is saying, I don't know, so show me. Teach me. Tell me what to do in this situation because I don't have a clue when I get into a heated argument. I don't have a clue when I get into a crisis situation. I don't have a clue. Teach me. Show me. Love me. Because right now I don't feel your love, Lord. What are you going to do? Show me who you are in this situation. And I've never got on my knees in a situation like that where God just reveals himself to me. Come on. But it's only there. Not up here. Yeah. Acting like I know it all. We even use the word ignorant as a negative device to hurt somebody. Mm -hmm. Ignorant just means you don't know. Mm -hmm. And it's a blessing because you can ask. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we use it to tear people down. Mm -hmm. We use it, you know why? Because it's more prideful to act like you know than you not even knowing at all mm -hmm. and not asking the question. Mm -hmm. I will feel better. My ego will feel better just to agree with you. Yeah, so you want me to do this? Yeah, I know exactly what you're doing. Your inside is like, I don't know what this person's talking about, but I don't want to ask no question because I don't want to look like a stupid fool. Mm. Ask the question. Right. Is Satan making you think that you're a stupid fool? Yeah. Mm. Your ego has no amigo. Mm. That's it. Preach, women! <laughs> <laughs> Amen! <laughs> Your ego has no amigo. Yeah. That's a fact. I tell people all the time about when I was working, and I say it a lot because this, whether you think you are or not, you always are creating an aura around you. About how I was working on a project with this, this man, and, and, and his aura was, don't ask me nothing. I know it. And so many people would help me on this project. And he tapped me, he said, man, why are they helping you? They don't help me. I said, well, it's not because you're scared, Tom. It's not because of this. It's not. He said, is this the aura you're giving out? I said, you carry an aura of I got it. You carry this aura. And I had to be blunt. Sometimes you got to make it plain for people. You are carrying an aura of action and, 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 and repudiates people because when you carry this state on you to act like you already know, nobody wants to help you. I didn't say it like that, but. <laughs> but you know what? He it's very few people that actually, like one out of ten, that actually yield say, you know what, I'm gonna work on that. He worked on it, he started asking people, how did you do? I said, wow, he's creating a new aura now. He's creating a new actor. And next thing you know, he started getting people to help him. But he you can break that spirit. By breaking that pride and that ego. Sometimes I come to work and I just give up. Get, I say, you know what? It's on me. We're going to have a barbecue day on this Friday. I'm going to buy it all. Y'all don't give me nothing. We're just going to celebrate. My work environment is the best. I've only been for five months. It's the best environment ever. Mm. Because you create your environment. That's it. That's it. That's it. Oh, Wendy, you just doing that the brown nose. Oh, I got you a play too. Oh, well, thank you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> now check this out. We are kicking it home. Oh, Keish, I'm going to bring you some barbecue today. Hey. It's the same. It spills in every area of your life. Sometimes I may want to bless my musicians. Sometimes I want to bless this. Sometimes I want to bless my parents. Sometimes I want to just take my mama out to eat. To Applebee's. I know she loves Applebee's. Sometimes I want to just go to a baby shower and just be a blessing to somebody, like we all going to today. Sometimes I just want to be a blessing. Why? Because I am a blessing. Yeah. Hey. You're not trying to be a blessing. You are a blessing. And if you understand you are a blessing, you stop trying to be a blessing because this is who I am. It's my identity. Yeah. 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 That's what happens when there's no borders yeah. between me and God. That's what happens when you're not a servant. Oh, yeah, you're not a servant. If you read the New Covenant, the Bible says, I call you what? What's that song you're singing? I call you friend. I don't call you a servant. Read the word. 
He says, a servant don't know what a friend knows. You're serving me, and you're not a missionary just getting paid to do something. <laughs> you're serving me because this is going to be your mansion one day. <laughs> it's a difference between somebody my parents hired to work on their property and me working on their property. It's going to be a difference because it's going to be mine one day. Yeah. When they do it, they leave. They don't, sometimes they don't even know. But when you do it and you know that you own this righteousness, I'm not borrowing it just on Sundays. Oh, I feel right today because I went on. and I put my best, my Sunday best on and I, <laughs> Come on, I'm man. feeling myself. <laughs> You're supposed to be feeling yourself every day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, every day. <laughs> feeling righteous. This is not a rental. No. Have you ever raised your hands, everybody who took a rental car to a car wash? <laughs> uh, Anybody? <laughs> oh my God, I got one. Is, you know the one, Lisa. <laughs> sure. Now, raise your hand if you taking your own car to a car wash. Oh, yeah. every hand. Why? Why is it one out of all the rest of you all? Because you don't care about rentals. You're not renting righteousness just on Sunday. Come on, man. <laughs> when I go in for Monday tomorrow at work, we're having church. It's just in a different way. It manifests in a different way. But we're having church. Why? I'm encouraging this brother. Yeah. I'm helping this person. I'm doing this for this person. Church is not just on Sunday, 1030 to 1230. It spills into your everyday life. And when you have that understanding and you humble yourself to that, you go, my God, I've been limited myself. Why are all these people acting so nice to you? I said, because you create your environment. I ain't bringing nobody no gifts, though. I ain't gonna... Okay, dude, don't. But stop asking me why I get it and you don't. I ain't bring. I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna thank nobody for something that they should already be doing. Okay, wow. just keep creating that funky life. That's <laughs> 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 good, huh? <laughs> just keep keep creating, because the Bible says. That, see, you're arguing from your psychology. I'm arguing it from the word, the word of God say. The Bible says, encourage one another when? Daily. Unless they become what? Deceived. Oh. That means when you when I stop it, the day I stop encouraging Keisha, she becomes deceived that she's not who she is. What? What? What you mean? Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, you are. That's why the world is going away. Because, oh yeah, that's somebody else's responsibility. It's our responsibility to be. This is what love is. Taking care of one another. Now, if we got this every man to themselves mentality. And we don't even know it's destroying our neighborhoods. It's destroying our. Who gonna do it? I don't know. I don't care. That's, you know, because it was drug dealers in the neighborhood. And they was like, I got to feed mine. That's the same mentality in business for some people. I, got, I don't care about nobody else. I just got to do for mine. That's Cain and Abel. <laughs> every man for themselves. God's kingdom is not every man for themselves. Amen? Thank you, Lord. As you bless somebody else, guess what happens? God blesses you. But you're not doing it so you can get God's blessing. You're doing it because it's your identity. So many people are doing it. Ah, I run. God, we ain't gonna pat me on the back. You're patted. You, you the one to start the patting in your own heart. When the prodigal son came home, right, the older brother said, "What? <laughs> you ain't never give me no fatty lamb. You ain't never do this and throw no party for me." What did the father, that which represented God, what did he say to him? What did he say, Jacob? Oh, I have. Everything I already had. This is not your rental. Come on. You could have went in the fridge any time and ate that calf. <laughs> what are you tripping off 
Hold up, bro. You mad at your brother because he eating the cat? He been with pigs all year. You could have opened that fridge up anytime and start chopping down. He says everything I already had is no. It's gonna be when you do all your signs. Oh. Is yours. So I tell you, what are you waiting for? Mm. What are you waiting for? TV Lane and YouTube. You know, Wendell, I've seen people 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. They, they say this to me, I'm, and I'm sorry to bust some of y'all, but I'm just waiting for my pastor to release me so I can do what God's calling. Mm-hmm. When you die, Uh-oh. God is not going to ask you what your pastor did. He's going to ask you, did you do the gifts that he has placed in you, Come TV on. land? He's not going to go, well, my pastor didn't let me do What your pastor got to do with our relationship? That means this. When the talents came back, one of them he gave five, one of them he gave four, one of them he gave three. The last one, what did he say? Well, because I knew you was a harsh God. Was he a harsh God? No. Who created that? He did. I knew that you were so stern, I put mines under the ground. He thought that he was doing good by putting his seed under the ground. He said, at least you could have put it in a bank and let it have regenerals and, and duplicate it worth that. But you ain't do nothing with what I gave you. He says, you evil and you wicked servant. You did not do nothing with my blessings that I gave you because he was serving a different God. A God of evil. A God that they thought that God was harder than he was. God is a loving God. Even if you fall on your face, you serve a God that picks you right back up. The Bible says in Proverbs, if you a righteous man falls seven times. He didn't say an unrighteous man falls seven times. What do you mean? That means a righteous man takes risk. A righteous man is not afraid to fall. Because if I fall, I know God's going to pick me back up. An unrighteous person believes what the Pharisees believe. I have to be perfect. Mm. So I'm not even going to ask the question because I'm not even going to be perceived as looking foolish. Mm. Okay? I tell some people, I, uh, you know, go through the Dave Ramsey class. I say, I say yeah, man, you know, I know it's some rough times, but, you know, you know, Domino's hiring, and you can just work, you know, just three shifts a week until you, you know, one time I had to uh, work... I had lost my job. We was going through some more time. I, I just got a little part-time job just for a year and a half till I caught back over my bills and got back out of debt. Oh, here we go. Well, when do I don't, I, I'll pray about that and see what God has to say. <laughs> I say, say about what? Here, here go an opportunity right here. They, I know this person. They say they'll hire you right now and then you can pay these debts off. Yeah. Well, you know what? Um, that's not really my calling. And, um, and I just don't think that God, I said, do you think that the calling of Jesus was to be a carpenter? He did that to take care of his finances. That means that you're so much in pride that you don't want to do this to catch up on your bills because you don't want to humble yourself. I can't, I can't imagine if seen somebody seen me work. You know, I remember they, they beat up that one brother that played on the Cosby show, Alvin. That played mm-hmm. Alvin on the Cosby show because he was working at Trader Joe's. And the internet just beat him up. Mm-hmm. Like, how can you be bagging groceries? And I'm like, he's providing for his family. Exactly. He's humbled himself. Yeah. <laughs> Which a lot of us need yeah. to do. Even with a doctorate degree, you can catch up on some bills doing something extra. But every time I try to present it, I've learned something. <laughs> a lot of us do got the, the, the king's disease, mm. that I'm too prideful for this. Mm. Pride comes before the fall. Mm. What are you too prideful to do? To serve people? Food? Mm. <laughs> you, you afraid that your image will be so jacked up? That you can't do this just to catch up? 
Don't tell me you ain't got no opportunity to do, because there's lots of opportunities. <sighs> Man. <laughs> you know, this is not one of those easy messages to swallow. Come on. This is not one of those God going to do it for you. <laughs> this is one of those messages of really saying God has already done it for you. As you humble yourself, you are able to see that he's done it for you. <laughs> As you are able to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And say, God, what is your plan? There, there's been positions where I came in sweeping the floor. Sweeping the floor of the foundation of a freeway. Sweeping the floor. And now, in a position where they've given me the position to be over it all. You may come being humble, but you may leave as a king. So stop thinking that something is so smaller than you. That you can't do it to catch up on bills. That's not who God is. Well, you know, when people, when I got an image to portray when People care about what I see. Your bills don't care about what you look like. <laughs> hey, he just keep on staring at you in the red. What you gonna do? Who you gonna call? <laughs> Those bus can't help you with this. No, I'll call Jesus. And Jesus is gonna open up a door. And I've seen this happen. I've seen it in counseling happen. Some people walk through the door and say, oh, my God, look at the opportunity. And some people too prideful. Some people say, oh, this is the only thing you got to do to win your life back. Just say I'm sorry. You can't do that. I'm like, wow. Being right is more than being humble? No, you're going to lose. You're going to lose every time. But I'm, I'm, wrong. I'm right in this situation. It doesn't matter if you're right. Humble yourself. Humble yourself to love yourself right there where you are. It's a lot that we may have to catch up on. It's a lot that may not be right. It's a lot. Listen, if we hold our breath to wait till everything get right, then we will never worship God. <laughs> ever, ever, ever. <laughs> it's people right now that are, their fathers are deceased and they're still waiting for them to say, I accept you back in. It's certain jobs that didn't let them go. And I'll be hearing people talk about 20 years. I used to work for IBM. And I was this. I was the corporate this. And they let me go. And I, I said, but it's time to move on. You ain't there no more. Yeah. It's time to let go and let God. But because it ain't the vessel that you want, you ain't going to receive it. Humble yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Humble yourself. And say, you know what, God? It may not look like the way I thought it was going to look. And this is the biggest one, right? <laughs> I humble myself to let people be who they are. <laughs> Uh-oh, now this is the hardest one. Yeah. Human beings are going to be human beings. What do you mean? They're not going to be perfect. They're not going to get it every time you say something. So I allow you to make a mistake. I allow you. I allow myself to make a mistake. I allow you to love me no matter what. Because that's who you are. Amen. Mm -hmm. And today I say thank you, Jesus. I love you. Because you first loved me. The Bible says even when we was in sin, when we was at our weakest points, that's when he loved us. Man loves you when you're at your best. Your best sales, your best this, your best that. That's when man loves you. God loves you before you even had all of that. Come on. Amen. That's what real love is. We're still waiting for that approval. Michael never got that approval. He chased himself, Michael Jackson chased himself into death. Mike Tyson, he destroyed it. He, he, he said himself he destroyed his whole life trying to get that. It was never enough. Solomon, with all his riches, drove himself crazy. He said it's like chasing a ghost. You never catch it. 
You're never going to catch him with that lottery ticket. You're never going to catch him with that drug. You're never going to catch him. You're going to be reaching, and the flesh keep on saying, he keep moving the goalposts. Keep moving the cheese. And God says, well, if you, if you come to me, you can have it right now. The cheese, the milk, all of it. Anything that you ask in my name, I am here. Amen? Amen. So think about this. What is in your heart? What is in your head? What is in your mind right now? Let's say, this to that, that's in your head? What? And you don't have to speak whatever it is. Just say, you know what? I'm not going to get it. I am it. Amen. Say that. I am it. Amen. Mm. You release that. Stop being a dog trying to chase the tail. <laughs> Running in circles. That's the reason why the children of Israel couldn't go into the promises. They couldn't humble themselves. You took us out here to die. We want to go back. There is no going back. It's time for you to create seed and to produce. God wants to love you so much that he does not want you to try to worship your oppressor to go back. You are, he already got your back. You, don't you see the things that he's delivered you from? Why do you want to go back? He loves you. Tell people all the time, man. We have the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, all these equipment things that God got for. And it never says nothing about your back because God got your back. Everything that's exposed that you think that God ain't got, He got that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yield to Him. He loves you today. He don't love you when you get it. He loves you now. He's, he's not a future help in need, the Bible says. He's a what? A present help. <laughs> that means that if you're looking to the future to find God, you'll never find him there. If you're looking in the past, you'll never find him there. He's a present. <laughs> the Bible says today is the day of what? Salvation. Even when Jesus prayed, he says, today, eat your daily bread. Anytime the children of Israel try to take the man and say, okay, we're going to save all this bread and eat tomorrow. Guess what happened? It's no good. <laughs> Why? He's a present God. Mm. He loves you right now. Before whatever you're waiting for arrives, the curse is not loving yourself before you get there. When I get there, I'll be blessed. No, you are the blessing. Receive. Love yourself. And all the mistakes that go with it. <laughs> Take whatever you want out that fridge right now. <laughs> Don't be like the product, older son of the product son, waiting, waiting, waiting. No, I'm opening up the fridge. I'm taking righteousness. I'm taking peace. I'm taking joy. I'm taking comfort. I'm taking it all. And I'm yielding to it. And I say, thank you, Lord, that I don't have to wait to get it, that you have blessed it to me now. Get off the waiting list. <laughs> I remember Put my Sega Genesis in the layaway, waiting to get it out. I'm gonna put ten dollars on it. Put ten dollars on it. Oh, I can't wait. And I'll see it behind a little cage. <laughs> Your blessings is not in a cage, and you're making payments to get it out. Your blessing is not in the layaway. <laughs> Your blessing is not because you're gonna tear for it and make repent. Repetition prayer. The Bible says you repeating it over and over again ain't going to make it come. <laughs> it's going to come because I came. Mm, Jesus. I am. He came to Moses and he didn't say, I'm going to be this. <laughs> I'm going to be this. And No, he says, 
Tell them I am. What you mean I am? What you, what you gonna do for most like what you gonna do for me when these people come for me? The same thing I'm doing right now, protecting you. I am that I am. I am. You ain't serving that I'm gonna be. Do you believe it? Then receive it. Amen. And for those who haven't received the great I am, <sighs> Yahshua got a message for you too. Receive today. Stop clogging the pipes of grace because you ain't got it all yet. <laughs> he loves you right now. And the only thing he wants you to say is this, this say it out your mouth. We are the ones that invite God in. He's a perfect guest. He's a perfect gentleman. He's not going to bombard his way into your life. The Holy Spirit, if you ask him, if you ask Christ into your life, if you just say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I want you. I receive everything that you did for me at the cross. You took away my shame. You took away my condemnation. You took away my fears. And I believe in you, Jesus. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Guess what? You are part of him. But he already knew this day was going to happen. He arranged this day before you were even born that you begin to know who he is. And when you know who he is, you are not reading the scriptures saying, what can I do? You are reading the scriptures finding out who your identity is. You're not reading the scripture saying, okay, this is what I need to do this week. You're reading about yourself. You're reading about the new spirit that's been lodged inside of you. <laughs> so when you see what Jesus did, oh, that's me. Just in a different way with my family and my workers or my entrepreneurship, but that's me. The what, what, oh, he fed he fed the 5,000. Oh, I want to feed people too. Oh, he, he prayed with people even after they died. I want to pray with people too. You're finding out who your real DNA is. Your re real DNA is not in your flesh DNA. Your real DNA belongs to your Father in heaven. That's why this world is messed up. Because we're trying to connect more in our flesh DNA to our spiritual DNA. So receive, man. Sometimes your, your flesh DNA may have hurt you. I heard the Holy Spirit saying, forgive your parents. For they do know what they was doing. But guess what? You're still here. <laughs> You're still breathing. That means that he still has a purpose for you. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. You're so good, God, man. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right.